All right, final blessings. We are back with another video. All right, before I begin, a couple quick announcements. Uh, if you are interested in a 2024 yearly forecast reading, you can book those now. I'm doing those roughly to the first early second week of February, and then that's a wrap. I won't be doing those no more. Uh, those will begin again later in the year uh, around Thanksgiving time, okay? Middle of November. Uh, yearly forecast reading is just what it sounds like. It's forecast for your whole entire 2024 messages from the spirits, what to expect. Uh, and again, a very helpful tool to utilize the knowledge and the information to utilize to help you have a successful and prosperous 2024. That's the goal, right? That's what we want to do. All right. So if you're interested in booking a 2024 yearly forecast reading, or you are interested in booking any type of reading, a clopathic demonic reading, a Santa Muerte reading, an Egyptian oracle reading, um, a Santa Muerte reading, DAT reading, shadow work reading, any of the aforementioned, shoot me an email at khnum19 at gmail.com and I will send you information on how to book a reading or a consultation. Please speed up the process. Send me a full spectrum of your weekly availability and the days and times that you are available. And that gives me easier access to send you time slots that's going to work for you and your schedule and my uh, schedule also. All right, if you're interested in signing up for classes, the way to sign up for classes, uh, go to the official Primordial Chaos Patreon page, uh, patreon.com forward slash Beniti, B-A-N-I-T-I, -I, tier three. That's the tier you want to join. Tier three will give you access to the three private classes I do every month on Patreon, including a group ritual we all do together at the end of the month. Um, it also gives you access to everything in the archives. You don't just get access from the day you join moving forward. You're getting access to over four years worth of content of continual ongoing series of classes like ancient Egyptian vampiric magic, Sith dark side alchemy and philosophy class, shadow work class, um, esoteric occult Bible study class, Eastern occult left hand path class, clopathic sorcery, Luciferian magic and self mastery. Uh, necromancy and dark witchcraft uh, there's more uh, these are continual series that, that I have ongoing they're continual I'm constantly adding new content to them all the time and then there's new classes being added frequently too okay so this gives you uh, you know that availability uh, again if you can't get to the classes live right um, they're all archived. You can take them on your own. And then there's ritual work in those classes that that doesn't even include all the archived ritual work in the ritual section. Everything is archived on the Patreon page. Everything is categorized. All the classes are in numerical order. All the resources are there. Again, I've designed the page and built it over the years in order for that individual who wants to take their occult left-hand path practice to that next level, right? If you want the hands-on work, Right? I'm not one of the motherfuckers that just talk about shit. I've never been that way. Those that know me know me. I don't just talk. I'm also about putting in the work. If you want to work with me, you got to do that keyword, work. Check it out. Patreon.com forward slash Benini. B-A-N-I-T-I. Tier 3. That's the tier you want to join. I do have mentorship programs on there where I take students under my wings and work with them in a mentorship type setting. Uh, but as I've said in the past, please... That is time. It's an investment, not just financially, right? It's an investment of being able to do the work and having the time to put in. I don't want to waste your time, and please don't waste my time, okay? My time is way too precious for me at this stage of my life. All right, having said that, too, don't forget to check out the Primordial Chaos podcast, available on Spotify and all major podcast platforms. Okay, uh, don't forget also <clears throat> to check out the social media pages Primordial Chaos 9, all one word on Instagram, Primordial Chaos, two words on Facebook. I also upload all this new YouTube content to the Primordial Chaos Facebook page. Um, also, that's the best place to go to keep abreast of the latest happenings, updates, classes. You can sign up and get that information. Also, here in the community section on the YouTube page. Um, you can find all, all that information there, too. That's another good place, uh, you know, to keep pace 
and keep up to date for all the latest happenings, all right? So if you want to reach out to me for a spiritual reading, uh, the direct link for the podcast, the direct link for the uh, classes, for the official Primordial Chaos Patreon page, all of that is in the description box of the video that you're watching right now. All right. Um, also, don't forget, uh, I will more than likely it'll be next week. I am traveling this week as of the recording of the date of this video, January 11th. I'm, I will be taking my uh, computer with me if I have time. Maybe I'll do a live while I'm in my hotel. I don't know if I don't do it in the hotel. Uh, uh, I might do it for Monday. I'll be back on Monday the 15th. So I'm thinking about maybe just doing it Monday night. But we'll see. Uh, I will be reviewing the Luciferian Sorcery book. That's going to be the next live. I've been putting that out there. The Luciferian Sorcery Rituals for Self-Empowerment. That book just came out a few weeks ago. It is written by uh, multiple authors of the Temple of the Ascending Flame, Asenath Mason included. I myself am one of the uh, contributors and authors of that book, along with many other members of the Temple. I encourage you to get that book. If you're looking for a book to really get results, if you're looking for ritual work for self-empowerment, self-mastery, that's the book I would encourage you uh, to get at the present moment. To me, it's one of the best books out there at the current moment. All right. So what I want to talk about uh, now, I've talked about this on and off here and there over the years, but this comes up a lot. Okay. Some people, as I've said many times off and on over the years, they get very complacent sometimes on the left-hand path in the occult. What do I mean by that? Sometimes people fall in love with a particular system, right? Now, before I say what I'm going to say, because I get emails on this and I got a recent email about this again, and the email was kind of, and again, not you know, putting names out there, it's nothing bad. But the email was kind of in, in along the lines of, is it okay to have, quote unquote, a main path, a main system, right? And I'm going to tell you no. And the reason why I'm going to tell you no, because what happens is, one, one of the things you must be built and equipped for on this path is to be very, you know, versatile, very fluid be able to change and move because the reason why I say no is this path is not exclusive to one sp specific spiritual system or practice, right? There are many spiritual systems, doctrines, grimoires, paths that are in the spectrum of the occult and the left-hand path because as a whole, you're on the path of the occult or the left-hand path. But for an example... Unless by choice, that's what you decide to do. But to me, a true dark sorcerer, black magician, occultist, left-hand path practitioner, god, goddess, whatever you want to refer to it as, is fluid in a multitude of different systems. Okay? That's why I don't recommend it. Because what you do is you cut off your creativity, number one. You limit your intellect. Okay? Because if you say, say you become exclusive to the Necronomicon or you become exclusive only to vampire magic, I'm not saying you, you, you might have phenomenal growth on certain levels, but you're not really broadening, as they say, your horizons and opening up your intellect to experience an influx of those things. I encourage people never to label yourself one specific thing. So what I teach is you could be practicing vampire magic, Luciferian philosophy or spiritual practice, the cl clopathic sorcery. Uh, you could be using the Sith practice. All of those things are part of this path. You are all those things and all of those things are you. Sometimes people want to be exclusive to something because it's a psychological dependency thing. Because I found over the years, part of the problem is some people can't function and cope on this path if they don't give themselves a specific title of exclusivity. That's my point. Okay? So if you need to define yourself, quote unquote, by something, you're a left-hand path practitioner. Because by making a very open and neutral statement like that, you are leaving the door open for all of those different spiritual systems. Now, I'm not saying you're going to 
everything that's labeled a cult left-hand path, you need to practice and mess. Because again, as I said before, it's going to be some shit you don't care for, right? There's going to be stuff you don't really vibe with, stuff you don't like, and vice versa. There's going to be stuff you really resonate and, and you do vibe with, right? Now, if you make the choice and you get up t tomorrow and you say, I just want to be a practicing Luciferian, like a person who is in religion says, I am a practicing Christian or I'm a practicing Muslim or I'm a practicing Buddhist. I mean, look, you could do that shit. I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying I don't really teach people to approach their spiritual path to self-mastery um, and limit in themselves to uh, a particular system. It's just not something I teach. It's not something I would encourage. Okay, that's all I'm saying. So, again, when it comes down to questions like that, I know people email me stuff like that. It's not a matter of what I think. Is it okay? First of all, I will never tell you what to do, tell you you should or should not do this or that. I don't do that. And the reason for that, and let me explain. I've explained this before. Because sometimes people think I'm, I'm trying to avoid the question or dodge them. I'm not going to tell you to go ahead, for an example, to do something. And then it doesn't go your way, and then you think you're going to vent that disappointment towards me, right? And I'm not going to tell you not to do something and say you missed out on something and then blame me for not telling you to do it. So hence, this is why you always hear me say, I'm not going to tell you what you should do or not do. You have to make that decision on your own. So it's not about me. It's not about Beniti giving you the validation to do something. we got to get out of that frame of mind. That way of thinking, right? You can't be a god or a goddess on this path if you're still looking others to make critical decisions for you. It's okay to ask for advice, but at the end of the day, the decision, that main decision that needs to be made, needs to be made by you and you only, okay? You need to come to the conclusion after reasoning things out that this is the right decision for me. This is what I should do. This is productive for me. This is going to benefit me long term. Beniti's not going to go, hey, man, no, nah, I don't think you should do that. Right? And Beniti's never going to go, I think you should do that. Right? And I can give you my suggestion. I might use verbiage like, well, you know, if it was me, that's probably something beneficial you might want to look into. But again, you still need to make that decision for yourself. Okay? That decision has to be made solely by you, okay? It can't be made by me. I can't tell you what you should or you should not do, okay? So let's 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 make sure we're doing the right thing as far as when it's coming down to that critical decision of what you're supposed to be doing. You're doing what you need to be doing for yourself, okay? So I suggest, again, you, you, you're versatile, in your spiritual practice, I do encourage you experiment, explore, because you could be closing yourself off to something that could be very productive for you. To me, again, in my opinion, when somebody, again, needs to be very exclusive to a particular path system, religion, spiritual practice, it, to me, it's it's a safety blanket. I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm going to call it for what it is, okay? And that was one of the reasons why we moved away from those lesser systems of conformity, right? That's one of the reasons why we stopped participating in those systems of conformity, okay? That's the reason why. So you must be versatile. You must, again, change is a part of that. I talk, I talk about that a lot. You must be willing to change on this path, right? You must be willing to embrace the change because sometimes the change comes in waves and it comes unexpectedly, right? But I'm going to tell you, a true left-hand path practitioner doesn't just limit themselves to a particular system or systems, plural, right? You're always open, right? Because look, I mean, for an example, just go on my Patreon page and look at the different amount of classes that I put on there that deal with a multiple different spiritual practices on the occult and the left-hand path. Because the only way you're going to make, you're going to master yourself and become a master is by being versatile in all these spiritual practices, right? And that's a great example to look at. Just go on my Patreon page and see the amount of ongoing series of classes that I offer with, con with content continuously being added because there's so many subjects and things to cover on this path. And that's the beauty of this path. There's always something to learn. You never just, oh, 
Yeah, it's all, uh, you know, I mastered it all. I got it all done. Yeah. No. That's no. That's, that's, it's a path where you're constantly growing and learning. It's a path where there's always new things on the horizon. And one of the things I love about this path, you're always challenging yourself. Because there's always these new things you uncover. There's always these new uh, uh, spiritual systems, knowledge, practices, things you may not be. And that's what's the beauty of this path. It keeps you sharp. It keeps you ready. See, when you belong exclusively, and it, it could be a religion or, or, or one system, it just, you start to find yourself not really growing because you're doing the same things over and over. You might be mastering those things, and you should if you're repetitively repeating them over and over. Now, I also want to say is it doesn't mean, this This is for everybody, and this applies to everybody, and I've said this many times in the past. You're going to find some spiritual systems that you really vibe with more and, you, and that you'll practice a bit more than other systems because of your strong spiritual connection with it. That's fine. That's okay, right? Yes, there will be other systems, you know, that you do, quote unquote, you know, have a stronger connection to than some other systems. So I'm not saying that. I'm not saying you can't have that, you know, going on. Because yes, that will definitely be something. And I'm sure a lot of you watching the video already experienced that. Like for an example, I'll use myself as an example, right? I per se like Egyptian Hecker, Luciferian magic, right? Just to name a couple that I probably, these are two systems I probably work more frequently than a lot of other systems. I love to work with Eastern left-hand path occult spiritual practices, like working with the Jinn, Shaitan, Iblis, the, uh, you know, Melek Taus, the Peacock Angel, because it, 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 the frequency of it, it vibes with me. It's right along the line with my energy, right? So yes, there's going to be some particular things that you're going to utilize and practice more than others. But I've also, as I've become very uh, open and receptive to experiment with things, I find that I've learned new things from other things that I thought I would never really grasp or get from that. But I, but it, it, it's by keeping your mind uh, open and available to indulge and experience those different things. That's how you draw the conclusions. And then on the flip note, yeah, there's been many things I've experimented with and I'm just like, I ain't feeling it. Right? I'm not really vibing with it. It's not for me. That's all. To me, that's the best way you need to keep your mindset. Okay? In my opinion, that's the best way. Now, again, as I said before, you can do what you want. But if you're asking me, what do you suggest? Not telling you what you should do. My suggestion is keep your, your, your mind as open as you can. That's my suggestion. Okay? I recommend you be very open and receptive. Study, read, and, 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 and connect with as much knowledge and information as you can. Don't limit yourself. Don't cut yourself off from ever reading or studying or learning about anything, period, in my opinion, okay? Because you are gonna find out if you do do that, what ten, what's tends is gonna start to happen. If you do do that, what tends to happen is, yeah, you, uh, you wind up putting yourself in a situation where something really productive could pass you by. Something really productive uh, or beneficial for your spiritual growth. You could be cutting yourself off from it knowingly or unknowingly, okay? I'm just going to be honest with you. That's just, that's just the facts or the bottom line, okay? All right, so this video wasn't going to be too long. I didn't want to do too long of a video here. I kind of wanted to... You know, just go over that. Uh, it's a quick email I just saw about an hour ago. So I figured, let me address this. Again, I have talked about this before in the past. You know, I kind of, you know, have made it clear uh, back then. And my stance is still the same today. You know, my stance is still the same today. I would highly encourage you to be very open-minded, very productive. Because it's the only way you're going to grow, people. And it's the same thing. Let me leave you with this last thing. It's the same thing when you are on the fence about trying something new. Right? Sometimes you just got to jump in and experiment. Right? There's no foolproof way to know if you should, should not, or if you're ready. All right? 
So that's my take on that. Again, other than that, if you need to reach out to me for a spiritual reading or a consultation, shoot me an email. KH, KH, uh, excuse me, KHNUM19 at gmail.com. Uh, my contact email address, along with the direct link to the podcast, along with the direct link to the Primordial Chaos Patreon page. All of that information that you need to reach out to me is in the description box of this video that you're watching right now. All right. Other than that, that's what I got for you. Infernal blessings. And we'll talk soon.